If you're around the age of 20, you're definitely familiar with Dan Schnatter's work. Stuff like iCarly, Zoe 101, Victorious, Drake and Josh, Kenan and Kel. And even if you've never watched these shows or you're just not a fan of them, it, there's no doubt that you've heard about them. It's like farting and trying not to smell your own fart. It's just totally unavoidable, and that's how these shows were. But Dan Schneider himself is no level one noob when it comes to having drama and uh, a lot of sketchy allegations surrounding him, because the dude is a sleazeball. But a couple days ago, a documentary came out called Quiet On Set that's taking all of his dirty laundry, especially the shit stained laundry, and shining a spotlight directly on that and exposing him for the creep he is, rightfully so. And that's a picture of the lovely man himself right there, Dan Schnatter, who looks like he's wearing a fat suit of himself. Like, it just looks, he looks unrealistically fat, but that's actually what he looks like. That That's the man himself. Like some wicked character customization going on right there. And this documentary exposed a shit ton. It practically spread Nickelodeon's dirty butthole open and showed us all those dingleberries hanging inside. And the biggest one, of course, is Dan Schnatter himself. And it led to him actually responding to this. He made like an addressment video with Tebow from iCarly, the smoothie stand man, who's interviewing him. And he's just addressing all the stuff they said on Quiet on Set. But also it revealed some pretty crazy stuff about Drake, Ve Drake Bell and uh, Brian Peck, that whole situation where Brian Peck raped Drake Bell when he was 14 to 15 years old working on Nickelodeon productions. And the main focal point of the documentary against Dan is his weird, insane sexualization of the children's stars on these Nickelodeon shows, and just his weird foot fetish with having to have their feet in the shows. Like, iCarly, there's the one example, that's gonna have a really weird search history, me just searching iCarly feet, but there's multiple occurrences where they just show their feet on the screen. Dan is a very big believer of having underage feet in his TV shows. There's an example also in Victorious where Victorious has fucking ketchup poured all over her feet. Which I assure you these examples are 100% crucial to the plot of these shows. They had to be there. There's, that's actually that's why he wrote them in, not because of his weird sexual fetishes with these underage kids, but for the plot purposes. But it goes one step further and apparently there's this old tweet that is still up from 2013 on the Salmon Cat Twitter that says, Salmon Cat tomorrow, right on the bottom of your foot, take a pic and use hashtag Salmon Cat Saturday. We'll retweet and follow until our, uh, until our fingers get sore. And I have no doubt in my mind that Dan Schneider himself was going through these submissions, ret retweeting and following the people that submitted. Because if you didn't know, Salmon Cat's fan base is mostly underage kids. And you know what Dan Schneider loves? Underage kids' feet. Which is just absolutely baffling how this has not been taken down after 11 years. You've had 11 years to scrub this off the internet, and it's still there. But regardless, now I wanted to talk about uh, the addressment of the documentary that Dan put out. This little interview that is just so clearly scripted. Hey, it's Boogie. I play T-Bow on Nickelodeon's iCarly. I got a chance to watch the Quiet On Set program, and I reached out to Dan to see if it was something that he'd be willing to discuss. I'm pleased to say that he said yes. Dan, how are you? I'm okay, I'm okay. Um, I really appreciate you reaching out and giving me the opportunity to talk to you about the, what we saw over the last two nights. I'm really glad you're here because I believe this is important. For sure. Uh, we've got a lot of things to unpack, um, but before I dive into my list of topics that I'd like to discuss, is there anything you'd like to start off with? Absolutely. Watching over the past two nights was very difficult. Me facing my past behaviors, um, some of which are embarrassing and that I regret. And I definitely owe some people a pretty strong apology. I feel like this is just a spit in the face or even a slap to the face for anyone that was actually involved in what took place behind the scenes on these Nickelodeon sets. Because you have the head honcho here, Dan Schneider, the one who was over top of everything when these things were happening. And this is just so clearly a scripted interview and it's not actually going to ask the questions people need to have answered. It's just going to give him something to say that he addressed the situation with. Because he's never going to actually face real repercussions for his actions, like with those weird massage things that were going on behind the scenes, he's never going to face accountability for that. They talk about it, but he just says that he apologizes. And we're way, we're far too beyond apologies here. We need repercussions. Like this shit isn't just something you can apologize for and move on. Action needs to be done. Let's talk about the massages. 
Okay. Watching the content yesterday, it was disturbing. It was wrong. It was wrong that I ever put anybody in that position. It was the wrong thing to do. I'd never do it today. I'm embarrassed that I did it then. I apologize to anybody that I ever put in that situation. And even additionally, I apologize to the people who were walking around Video Village or wherever they happened because there were lots of people there who witnessed it who also may have felt uncomfortable. So I owe. Yeah, I'm sure your apology just erases all of that happening. Those weird ass neck massages you were making the girls give you. It, I, that just makes bygones be bygones. But I feel like more importantly than the neck massages, what needs to be addressed is the weird sexualization of feet from these underage actors. That That's probably what you should be addressing and talking about. The sexualization of underage kids, that's, that's the real pressing topic, Dan. Dan, talk to me about the writer's room. From what I saw, not cool. No, no, and I, I don't mean to cut you off, but if I can cut right to the chase, let me just say, no writer should ever feel uncomfortable in any writer's room, ever, period, the end, no excuses. Um, most TV writers, comedy writers have been in writer's rooms and they are aware that a lot of times there are inappropriate jokes made and inappropriate topics come up. Uh, but the fact that I participated in that, especially when I was leading the room, um, it embarrasses me, I shouldn't have done it. Um, and, and, and I can tell you why it hurts really bad for me. And you can tell as we go through that this, it almost feels like they might have rehearsed this a couple times. Like it, it feels to me like he has ran through these lines multiple times, at least like three times he's rehearsed this. Maybe they even rehearsed it before the cameras turned on for this addressment of the quiet on set documentary. It just doesn't feel real which, in my opinion, makes this feel even more fake and insincere. And makes it more so feel like he's only talking about this because it got exposed. Now we know you've had a lot of success over two decades. Thousands of people have worked with you for you. Okay. Let's speak directly to the people who did not have a good experience with you. Okay, I would like to speak to those people because I hate that anybody worked for me and didn't have a good time. You know me, you've been on my sets. Um, Look, I've had some employees that have worked for me for 10 years, some more than 20 years, who would work with me again, but um, not everybody. There's a, still a significant number that didn't have a great time working for me, so my batting average isn't nearly high enough in that area. Um, and the way they wouldn't get the best of me is that I would let the pressure of doing 40 or even more episodes per year, I would let that pressure get to me, which a good boss should never, ever do. This just... It's like the most nothing burger questions ever. Like these aren't actually the answers that any, or the questions that anyone has. No one is worrying about this. They want to know about the weird ass shit you were doing with, to, with slash to the kids. Which is why this video has such a great reception with an overwhelmingly negative dislike to like ratio and the comments have also been turned off. You know the question that we should be asking Tebow? You should be saying, hey buddy, why did you have someone squirt ketchup all over Victoria's feet? And uh, why did you have Sam and, and uh, what are the, uh, Carly and Sam draw faces on their feet and do a whole entire segment showing off their feet? Why'd you do that? All these jokes that you're speaking of, um, that the show covered over the past two nights, every one of those jokes was written for a kid audience because kids thought they were funny. Mm -hmm. and only funny, okay? Um, now, we have some adults looking back at them 20 years later through their lens, and they're looking at them and they're saying, oh, you know, I don't think that's appropriate for, for a kid show. Mm -hmm. And I have no problem with that. If, if that's how anyone feels, let's cut those jokes out of the show, just like I would have done 20 years ago or 25 years ago. I cut it. I want my shows to be popular. I want everyone to like it. Because the jokes, uh, you know, they, 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 they can be an issue or they can't be an issue. But at the end of the day, they're jokes in a show. Who really fucking cares? There have been actual crimes committed. And the documentary goes in depth about one of those crimes that I'm going to talk about after I go through this video with Drake Bell. We should be talking more so about that shit. So now we're going to transition over into the Brian Peck and uh, Drake Bell situation thing. It's sort of a separate part, but they also end off this thing talking about it, which is a good transition into what I'm going to show you next. The darkest part of this series discuss child predators. Now, I want to make sure that we clear a couple of things up. Okay. Brian Peck was not hired by you. No, I did not hire Brian Peck. 
this was a Tolan Robbins production? Yeah. And when Drake and I talked and he told me what had happened, I was more devastated by that than anything that ever happened to me in my career thus far. Mm. And I told him, I'm here for you. What do you need? Which Drake mentioned in the show that we watched last night. So that's what his, so that's what he says about the uh, Drake Bell and uh, Brian Peck situation. And just in case you don't know, Brian Peck is a con convicted sex offender for what he did to Drake Bell. This isn't allegations. He did rape Drake Bell whenever Drake was between the ages of 14 and 15. And he got arrested in 2003 for which it says was lewd contact with a minor being initially charged with 11 counts in 2004. And it says it was actually revealed that it was Drake Bell was his victim in 2004 and he was convicted on two counts and was sentenced to serve 16 months in prison and register as a sex offender. And 16 months in prison is not nearly enough for, for being a convicted sex offender. He, he did shit to a child. He ruined their entire life and all he had to do was serve 16 months. And now I want to show you this clip here from Quiet On Set from Drake Bell talking about... Uh, Brian Peck's sentencing whenever he was actually going through the court proceeding for what he did to Drake. On the day of sentencing for Brian, I get to the courthouse. It was the most unbelievable thing I'd ever seen. His entire side of the courtroom was full. Full. There were definitely some recognizable faces on that side of the room. And my side was uh, me, my mom, and my brother. So that shows you right there where the Nickelodeon executives and the big wigs and all the important people at Nickelodeon stand. They stand with sex offenders. They stand with child predators. And Drake Bell had no one supporting him except for his own family. Even though, if you recall... Dan Schneider did say that he said he'd be there for Drake to support him all the way and do anything he needs, but he can't even bother to show up for the sentencing. The most important part of being there for someone? That's just kind of strange. But yeah, that's absolutely fucking crazy. That, that, like, the whole entire courtroom on the, uh, the rapist side was full. And not one person showed up to support Drake besides his own family. The victim. The victim had no support. That is... Jesus, that's so sad. That's sickening. That's that. that oh, God damn. Brian had been convicted, but getting all of this support from a lot of people in the industry, and yeah, I was pretty shocked. Yeah, that's absolutely insane. Someone is a convicted sex offender, and they have all the support in the room, and the person that was the victim of this sex offense has no support whatsoever. That, that's, that just honestly shows the, the true colors of what goes on behind the Nickelodeon scenes. And by the way, Brian Peck did get work after he got out of jail for being a convicted sex offender. He worked on The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. He got a job with Disney Channel after he, he got convicted as a sex offender for working with Nickelodeon. He hopped on over to Disney. That's just fucking crazy. Sexually abusing a child and then still getting work on children's television shows. That just honestly is... That's some subhuman shits going on there. That's just... Uh. Dan, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you. Thanks for stopping by, man. Thank you. Thanks for wasting our time, Dan and Tebow. Thanks for wasting our time with that shit-ass addressment that actually doesn't really talk about any of the important things and kind of just skips over everything that people wanted answered. But regardless, I just wanted to go through that whole situation with you because it's just, it's very sad and sickening. And Dan Schneider is a piece of shit. As a matter of fact, it seems like most of the, the executives and bigwigs at Nickelodeon at that time, I don't know if they're still the same ones in charge, were huge pieces of shit. And they're all disgusting. And other than that, I'll catch you in the next one.